Hello, I'm here in a sunny black pool for another video from Aqua Pleasure Beach. Today I'm going to do one of my final Valhalla updates, having a look at the current state, seeing if it's a tiny bit better, seeing if they maybe have sorted out people trying to e enter through the exit when the ride not open yet. So we'll have a look at that. As you can see, it is now full and ready to go. We're just waiting for them to do all of their tests, make sure that everything's running smoothly so they open the ride and we don't get disappointed. I'm also going to go around, look at the park, see if there have been any updates. It is only uh, two weeks since I was last here, so I doubt there'll be many updates. One of the biggest things is that Avalanche is closed today. So is um, Dora's World Voyage. That's not surprising, that ride's been Close, or like opening one day, close the next day, and it's been like that for this whole season. Opened late, and now it's not opening some days. But Avalanche, I'm going to go have a look and see exactly why that's not open today. See what's happening around Avalanche. It's been struggling lately. Um, things have been breaking on the right. It, it's struggling. Reliability with Avalanche is poor now. It's showing its age, so. Who knows, will we see Avalanche removed in the near future? We just have to wait and see. But walking down to Avalanche, we'll go see what's happening around there. We'll then make our way up to Valhalla, which is set to open at 12 o'clock today, which is really good. It looks like they're starting to see that one o'clock, especially now during holiday season, is very late. Even though the park's open till 7 p.m. today, that 12 o'clock opening is a nice addition. But let's go see Avalanche, go see what's happening around there. Let's go back past Big Dipper because I've been told and I can see it now, there's a new countdown clock to the centenary uh, celebration that I will be attending. So keep an eye out for my video on that later in August. But let's go over to Avalanche via Big Dipper. See you up by Big Dipper in just a second. So just walking up the ramp to Big Dipper and as you can see, there's now the countdown clock to the centenary celebration, which is of course on the 23rd of August at 8 p.m. A big party to celebrate 100 years of Big Dipper. That's a really nice touch, having that countdown clock. That's really nice. Yeah, it's a bit difficult to show you on the video, the countdown, as you can see, but hey ho, I'll do my best. So, the, the way that Plush Beach are handling the 100th anniversary of the Big Dipper is really, really nice. With the countdown clock, the re full repaint on the areas that the public can see, unless you're in the hotel, really, really nice. Mix that with it is so much smoother, so they've done something to the trains as well. It's in a great condition and it's really nice to see Plush Beach honouring uh, its older coasters with these big celebrations. And I can't wait to see what happens on the centenary uh, celebration on the 23rd of August. Should be good. Just walking down to Avalanche now. Try and see if I can see any reason why it's not running today. As of yet now, I still can't see why it's closed. It could be an issue with the trains themselves. You never know, we will, you can't know that, you can't see that. Uh, but I'm just gonna see if there's maybe track work happening or if it's something's gone on with uh, an interior um, aspect of the ride. So yeah, it is quite sad to see Avalanche closed today. It's a really, really good ride and it, gets massive queues but if there's uh things not working on on the ride you, safety comes first which is uh, paramount safety is paramount in these parks so it is good to see that they're not risking it if there is a minor issue or it could be something major with the lift hill we don't know but it is quite interesting to see them parking avalanche on the lift hill now, in my last video, you, I did show you the new Avalanche sign and the new Thompson Carousel and Alpine Rally. Looks like the Alpine Rally is open today. Uh, 
at 12 noon along with the Thompson Carousel. That's nice to see. Uh, they only open these really in uh, the main summer season because uh, if you want a carousel you've got the the main one over by the big one or you've got uh, Derby Racer. So it's interesting uh, Avalanche. Uh, it's a shame it's not open today. Safety comes first. If there's an issue with the ride it's safer not to open it. So it's one of those things. It's an aging ride and I think we're gonna see downtime like this becoming more frequent so they really do need to work on it and sort it out either retrack or the dreaded uh, closure and rip out of the ride it's old now and it's showing its age but let's not dwell on sad facts let's go and see what's happening by Valhalla maybe go on Ice Blast, haven't been on that for a while and basically just look at the entrance plaza area and see what's happening around there. Why not? We'll see you now. So a thing that people don't know is that you actually get a free half show of the Hot Ice performances uh, with your e-ticket and it happens at 2.30 during the uh, Hot Ice season. You also get a discount entry on the full two hour performance at 7 p.m. Uh, but if you just come at 2.30 with your uh, e-ticket, you can get in. It is base, it's first come first serve uh, with access. Uh, you can go in there, if I'm not mistaken, and pre-book um, if you want one of the uh, premium seats. But it's a really nice addition uh, having a 2.30, 50 minute performance of Hot Ice free with your e-ticket. Don't forget it, it's a really good show. And if you haven't watched the new Hot Eyes show, I highly recommend it. It's a really, really good show. So the fountains are on. That can only mean one thing. The ride is filled and cycling. So let's go and have a look and see the ride cycling around and see, maybe, try and work out how long until it may open. Let's have a look. So yeah, the ride is full and moving. Boats aren't moving just yet, but the water is. They need to sort this temporary fencing out. They don't need it along here, there's ropes. It looks bad. They've put so much work with all the planters and the rope fences to have all this uh, temporary fencing isn't a good look and needs to be sorted but let's go over to the exit of the ride and see if anything's happened down here seriously these temporary fences need to go they look awful okay so as we saw from the other side the water is running the ride isn't yet but it is running and ready one big thing to notice is the doors on the exit have reappeared they were uh they weren't there last time i was here so to see those back but stuck open kind of interesting sorry currently you can't see anything in but the doors are back that's one good step but they do need to uh start running the ride try and get it open for before 12 would be perfect but hey ho but the water is running at 11 o'clock 5 to 11 sorry the water's running and it's ready to go this is a good sign operations on Valhalla have become fantastic over the past month good on them get those doors closed so with the exit ramp debacle it's still not sorted people can still walk straight along the exit ramp this needs addressing People will soon come and walk along here thinking the ride's ready, especially when they see the boats going round. This needs addressing. They need to put something on the exit ramp. Oh, 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 the, the ride is moving. The ride is moving. Okay, so that just means that people will be trying to go along the exit ramp. Put a gate either over here or up there that you have to push open or something like on 
ice blast, a little turntable, put something there because so many people will always try and walk along the exit ramp when the main entrance is closed. And that is dangerous and also means that the staff are constantly having to worry about telling people not to go down there or turn around. That needs addressing. The fact that it's still not sorted. Come on, Pleasure Beach. You need to fix it. It was a problem before the reimagining. It's a problem after it. Just put a gate or something up there, please. So before Valhalla opens, I'm just going to go on a quick relaxing ride of Wallace and Gromit Thrill O Matic. Let's have a look and uh, see what it's like today. It's been struggling a bit lately with the smell pod. It'll be interesting to see how it goes. So, just come off Wallace and Gromit. It's being a bit plagued with issues today. Scenes were out of time. First time I've ever seen that happen on Wallace and Gromit. The smell pod's still on fish, so there's no scent in the baking scene. And overall, it's in a bit of an odd situation today with the out of time scenes. When I say out of time, they're starting. Some of them were starting as the ride vehicle was leaving the scene. So most of the scene was in pitch black and then it just switched on and you were like, oh, well, we're, we're gone now. Uh, it's a bit of a shame because when that ride runs perfectly, it's a really, really good dark ride. Uh, and it's great to have it here at Pleasure Beach. But yeah, just out of sync, no smell pods. It's the worst ride I've had on Wallace and Gromit. And I don't know why it's out of sync either because it never has been out of sync. And the ride, relays normally are perfect so it's a bit of a shame that but that was a nice little relax before Valhalla so uh, let's see if we can see anything happening around Valhalla to give us an inkling to if it's gonna open on time or not let's go have a look okay so we are 40 minutes from the uh, scheduled opening time of Valhalla and at the moment no news. The uh, the rain cape hut is still closed up, and uh, Odin's vault is still closed up as well. So, very much going to be a twelve o'clock opening. Uh, it's not going to open any earlier, and uh, hopefully we see it actually open at twelve and not be Valhalla and open late because Valhalla. But no news. They can have the ride running with the waterfall switched off. They don't have to have them on. And they are the, the waterfalls are just blowing everywhere. So I think probably would be a good idea to have those switched off today. But it's yet again, my opinion, but it would be nice, I think, just due to the wind today, to have them switched off. We'll see if this boat's gonna go um, and see if the show scenes are running or not so i'll see you now when the boat goes through So still no effects can be heard inside, the soundtrack isn't playing, so they haven't switched on the uh, show scenes yet, uh, which means they're still doing the safety checks on the ride system itself. Uh, so within about 15 minutes we should start hearing the, uh, the audio play when the boat goes through. Pretty standard procedure, they are two separate systems. So that's that's okay. Um, yeah, not much to say at the moment. Uh, Pleasure Beach is Pleasure Beach. They haven't done any changes uh, that I can see. Avalan is an interesting one, and uh, Valhalla is currently just doing its test. So I will leave you, and I will see you 
in about an hour when hopefully I get on Valhalla and I can give you a bit of an update on what's happening because there's been a few changes in there since I was last here. So one of the questions I'm always asked about when I come to Pleasure Beach, specifically to ride Valhalla, is what, what do I do to prepare? Now, one of the main things I always do is when I come to Valhalla, I wear quick drying clothes, so that is normally sports clothes. That helps a lot with drying off after a run through on Valhalla. One of the things that I've started doing is, of course, shoes get soaked on Valhalla. So, what loads of us regulars for the ride like to do now is we get water shoes. Those are the shoes that you wear for water sports. You get those, they don't look so good but they dry quickly and they are very light and flat, which means that they are easy to carry coming to the park. You put them on just before going on to Valhalla and then afterwards, take them off, put them into a bag, done and dusted. That is my recommendation if you're coming to ride Valhalla. Quick drying clothes and specific shoes to get soaked because your feet will get soaked and water shoes are a really good bet. Now the water's still running, which is always a nice sign. The pumps haven't switched off, which is, as I said, a good sign. Station not moving, and it looks like the house lights have now switched off. So hopefully, very soon, we will be getting uh, a little glimpse of the show scenes running, which means we aren't far from the opening of Valhalla, so fingers crossed. We'll also see if the waterfall is running as a waterfall, the water mist, which it was last time I was here. If it's the water mist, that's an interesting change. But hey, uh, that would be better if it doesn't switch off like sometimes it does. But I'll keep an eye out, and if a boat goes through, I'll film. So hopefully, we hear that. Your destination. Never glorious. Life. See you in just one moment. Now, normally when we're just under half an hour away from the opening of the ride, Odin's vault starts to open and the rain capes hut also starts to open. So the fact that they aren't open yet leads me to believe there's something going on inside the ride. I don't know what that is because it's a dark ride, so you can't see what's happening. The water's still running at full health. And it does look like the house lights are switched off. So hopefully we will see uh, the ride running again momentarily and hopefully get to hear some of the audio playing. And that'll give us the hope that it will be opening shortly. So it's now been, uh, it's now been 12 minutes and there's no movement of boats or anything. Normally in the half an hour leading up to the ride opening, it does start, uh, the, well, they have it running at full pelt with the audio running. So it not running, the show scene's not running and the waterfall switched off. I'm a bit worried that there may be an issue. There may not be, and it may just be that they're doing a routine check. But the minute that you see Highgate, arrive in the station always fills you with a bit of dread could we see a bit of a later opening today i sure hope not i really want to go on and see have they just fixed those tiny little things that i talked about in my last video please open i really don't want the curse of valhalla to be real i just broke it please don't come back. So this is the problem when you put a uh, ride opening time. Uh, the a queue forms and there, uh, this huddle. Yeah, maybe waiting a bit because it doesn't look like it's going to open at 12. You have 15 minutes and the ride's not cycling. Odin's vault is closed. The rain capes are closed. They've not said anything. This is when you start getting some angry people. 
I really hope before 12 someone comes and says if it will open or not because they need to do something. The riders e stopped inside, technicians are on site. Please open, please. So it has now been confirmed by the staff at the entrance gate that she is having technical difficulties today. There are tech support on site trying to figure out what's going on. Of course, they can't tell us. I have a gut feeling it could be to do with the turntable again, but who knows, it could be something else. It did take them up until five minutes prior to the scheduled ride opening to come out and tell people, even though I noticed the ride go down long before. They need to work on that. Tech are now leaving, which could be a good sign. We may see the ride running, so I'll go over to the entrance and see if we can see the show scenes running. Uh, Highgate is still on site, but when Valhalla goes down, there's only one thing to do, and that's eat donuts. Let's hopefully get on this ride in the next half an hour. Hopefully. So the waterfall is coming back on, which is always a good sign. So normally when the waterfall is coming back on, that means the ride is now fully functional again. So fingers crossed, this means we see the ride open very shortly. It's a great sign, this. So a way that you know you've been on a ride uh, way too many times mm -hmm. uh, is when you know the lines if there's a storyline off by heart. So if you know the storyline and all the things said within the ride off by heart, you know you've been on it way too many times. And that is me with Valhalla. So. I really hope I get on it again. See if it's working. Waterfall being on is a good sign. If not cycling as of yet, and they are still telling people to go elsewhere and not queue. So we could still be a tiny bit of time away uh, from the ride opening. But fingers crossed by one o'clock, we will be on it. Any later than that, starting to get a bit annoying. And it would be nice if they gave us an update. Furthermore, they've taken the time off the board at the front of the ride, but on the app, it's still saying opening as of 12 noon. We are past 12 noon. And they don't update the app fast enough. Um, which is a problem because loads of people are starting to use that instead of reading boards and they're coming and being a bit annoyed like why the no so be faster with the app and then everything's fine fingers crossed i get on valhalla today fingers crossed it's within the next hour please Okay, so I have done three rides on Valhalla today. And one word to sum up all three. Amazing. The ride is now fully functional. When I say fully functional, it is fully functional. Every effect worked, every run through, including ones that are a bit temperamental, they've fixed them all. Full ring of fire every time. The water effect after the first drop worked every time. All the Valhalla logos all lit up perfectly. All the fire worked. The water vortex only lit up when you arrive. Everything is working phenomenally. The audio is nearly there. We are so close 
to it being conflict. All they need to do is sort out the audio on the lift hills, make them a tiny bit louder. The music in the Odin stone on the first lift hill, that part of the lift hill, perfectly fine. It is a perfect volume. The voices, which are meant to say, turn around, not this way, all that kind of thing, still can't hear them. You can just hear them, they need to be a tiny bit louder. So maybe one or two more speakers or just turn it up in that scene and that will be perfect. The turntable audio, you can still hear is struggling. There's still a bit of distortion on there. It's the only part of the ride where you can hear a bit of tinniness in, in the audio. And I think either the EQ on that audio is a bit off or the speakers are, uh, are in bad condition and need, um, need replacing. Apart from that, it is in great condition. The um, fire bombs right at the end work perfectly ring of fire as i said already every time on the water and around the water and i was reading a few days ago from when i'm here that the on the right side there's new fencing and they didn't move the sensors properly so it wasn't sensing the boat um which meant that that fire effect that chases the boat on the left hand side sorry uh on that final drop wasn't working They've moved the sensors, they have been moved, and now they do work, and that fire effect also goes off every time. The ride is running spectacularly, everything is working. Just fix those two audio issues, the lift hills with um, like the heave ho on the second lift hill, and the voices telling you to turn around on the first lift hill, fix those, Fix the turntable speakers, either replace them or tweak the EQ. And that ride is done and dusted. It will be running like a charm. Now, some things that I noticed that were different from the last time I was here. Now being able to hear the full created soundtrack by um, the notable stranger. Of course, it has been publicly released now. That also includes all the audio, uh, all the audio apart from the voiceover. So those voices on the lift hill we've now heard, um, and uh, where it says "Hala" in a whispery tone as you go over uh, over the um, the first lift hill. As you go back down into the trough to start that first section, it does say Valhalla as you go into the trough from the lift hill. That's a really nice effect and that's only, I've only noticed it now because they've fixed the audio issue. I think there could be a, the voices with the skulls and the light there, they need to be sorted because they will be integral to the storyline. You can see the storyline. The audio that you need to hear, you can hear. Just those final tweaks and it will be perfect. But I'm now gonna go get changed into something dry and warm, and I will give you a full rundown on what happens inside for those who don't wanna go on, but really want to see what it's like. Since we can't film, I'll give you a full rundown of what happens inside Valhalla. See you in just a moment, hopefully in drier clothes. See you now. So I've now got into my dry clothes and I've come up onto the balcony part of Loki's. And let's sum up what happens within Valhalla. Now, there will be ultimate spoilers in this section of the video. If you don't want any spoilers, go past this now. You will see a chapter where, which will say, spoilers beware. You click on it and skip it if you don't want any spoilers. So be warned ultimate spoilers ahead. Now before we go into the spoilers, you'll see it'll say spoilers and I will tell you with a little countdown the spoilers are coming. If you've not been into Loki's, now Loki's is a very interesting location. Loki's is the rotisserie chicken and the bar upstairs. It's a really nice place but it wasn't built as a restaurant. 
No, it was actually the station for the cable car that used to connect North Park to South Park. I know, interesting, isn't it? People don't know that. And that's why Loki's has that weird angled uh, front section. And that's because that's where the cable cars used to leave from. And actually here on the balcony, you can see part of the old queue line for the cable car. And apparently even upstairs in the roof section of Loki's is all the mechanics still for the cable car. Which is really, really interesting. But what's really nice about Loki's is this terrace. Because on this terrace, you get a perfect view of Valhalla, of the turnaround and the station. Now imagine, on the older version of Valhalla, that turntable was open, so you could see, you could stand here, look up and wave at the people who were in the turntable. Sadly, not anymore, but it's still a really nice place to come and sit and have a meal or a drink from the bar. But be warned, Spoilers ahead. If you don't want spoilers, fast forward. This is your warning. So if you don't know what Valhalla is, it is a dark water ride opened here in Blackpool Pleasure Beach on the 14th of June in the year 2000. It was designed in-house and built by local contractors with the ride system being built and designed by Intamin. In 2001, they replaced the boats. These are the boats that are still seen on the ride today. These included new grab rails, comfier handles, all those things which make it a more enjoyable ride. The original boats were actually shipped over to Park Warner Madrid for Rio Bravo. In 2007, the boats had another upgrade. They replaced the seats, adding a new padded headrest to make it just a wee bit more comfortable for people riding it. But it went through its largest renovation, pre-reimagining, in 2011, to reopen with the whole facade of the ride being replaced. This is the facade that is now seen here today. The reason for the replacement is the original facade, the original rock work on the outside of the ride was deteriorating quite quickly and it was starting to look really bad. Moss was growing but it was starting to fall apart. So they replaced it with this less colourful but a lot more durable exterior that is seen today. However, it has had three versions technically of the ride even though the facade's only been changed once. You've got the current brand new version, the reimagined version but previously you had two different versions. There were minor differences between them. There were minor, minor differences between them. The biggest actually being the audio, that iconic soundtrack that we all know and love from the second version of Valhalla wasn't the original audio. However, you could still hear the very original audio that was created, well, the original audio that was created for the very first iteration of this ride which was heard on that first lift hill. Sadly both pieces of audio have been replaced with the new soundtrack that is heard throughout the ride currently really yeah quite cool. Okay so enough about the history of Valhalla even though it is a very interesting ride and has gone through a lot of changes but let's talk about what it's currently like now. As I said, major spoilers coming up. So, what's it like now? Okay, so those who remember how Valhalla was will remember multiple scenes that are quite iconic. The first one is as you enter, there were two wolves. They swung out and there were barking at you. There was also a dog just sat next to them, just being a dog. Then there were two big uh, flame cauldrons, fake flames, but they were next to the trough on either side just as you went onto the lift hill. They have all remained, however they are now static, the dogs, their mouths move but they don't swing out anymore. But the flame has remained, so as you go around 
you still have those. In that first section, it now has a storyline. So the whole of Valhalla has now, has now got a storyline. Previously, it didn't have a storyline, a vague storyline of you were in Valhalla, but it didn't have a specific storyline that guided you along the journey. So as you enter the ride, you are greeted by your guide. I'm yet to find out the name of the guide, which would be fun. But you are greeted by your guide. And the opening words are, when fear leads the way, the destination is never glorious. It then goes on to say, if you are looking for a place in this world, arise and then Valhalla. So after he said arise, there's a, the new Valhalla V that was created for the reimagining lights up. Um, basically lights behind it and it's like a pinhole style thing with the light behind it and it looks fantastic. You then go on to the lift hill. Now, in, previous, in the previous version of Valhalla, the lift hill, that first section was a trunnel tunnel. It was constantly breaking down eventually uh, I never saw it working after 2015. Uh, some people say they never saw it working after the facade was replaced. Uh, I was lucky enough, I got it once. Um, so they ripped out the Trommel Tunnel and now you have skulls with glowing eyes. And in that section there is audio playing where the skulls are basically screaming at you. They are ghosts saying, turn around, not that way. Um, trying to warn us not to continue this journey to Valhalla. You then get out and it opens up and there used to be an Odin's face that turned into an Odin skull, which was saying weird things, threatening messages. That got removed. And now it is a stone tablet of Odin with uh, smoke coming out of its mouth. Uh, and music is blaring and it's quite creepy. Light show and it's, uh, it's all pretty cool. And uh, then just as you go off the uh, first lift hill into the trough, that little dip, uh, a Viking whispers to you, Valhalla. And that is like your welcome to Valhalla moment. You then go around the corner. Now this part was never liked by many people, this first little bit. There were like 2D faces, it was a bit odd. Um, it wasn't in good condition. But uh, you go around the corner and there's loads of hanging lanterns. Um, and our guide returns. So he says, uh, the afterlife can be caught. And then there's a bit, small little jump scare. And then the afterlife can be surprising. And then you go around the corner and you get to the um, bow fire scene that has remained. They've fixed it up so it's much better than it used to be. In that scene, there is some audio. Now I am still yet to try and figure out what he says in that room. Um, it's I'm I, I haven't fully got what he says yet. Um, but you then go into what used to be the waterfalls where they were on both sides, and it was like the flashing white light to make it like oh my god, woo! and there had to be something right in there because you were about to go into the turntable, which was open, which you can see behind me there. Now, of course, it is covered, so it's no longer light. So now it's all wood panelling, red, and it's uh, the river of life and something and something. I'm still trying to work out exactly what he says in that part of the scene. You then get to the turntable, which used to turn you and then send you backwards. It now turns 160 degrees, the opposite direction now. Instead of just a tiny uh, degree chip, now turns you 160 degrees all the way around, whilst there's a voice that yells, turn around and then fast paced drumming uh, happens when you are spinning and then a viking uh, like goes um, like he's snarling at you and then you go down the drop after the this is where the photos are taken by the way after the first drop there is a stone viking basically stone viking face uh, which chucks water out at people and if you're on the front two rows you get drenched on that section. We then get to everyone's favourite scene prior to the reimagining which is the um, uh, the ice scene. It is no longer 
as cold as it used to be because there's no ice sculptures in there anymore and there's no snow anymore so it's not an ice room anymore as it used to be which is a bit of a shame uh, but the new one is much more sustainable in that we meet um, some goddess who Vikings look into her eyes or sent to Valhalla or something I don't know um, that whole section the audio is a bit uh, it's a bit tinny so it's quite difficult to understand um, but yeah you see frozen uh, Vikings and, and that you then go into the second drop this is the 70 degree drop it's not the tallest drop uh, but it's the 70 degree angle drop so it's incredibly steep at the bottom of that drop is the water vortex which now only switches on when you get close to it so you don't even see it coming it only switches on and it's kind of like a chaser light sequence it's really quite cool so it only lights up in sections as you go along really nice feature you then get to the two water cannons and the waterfall that comes over just before you're about to go through um you then get to the second lift hill on this lift hill previously there was never any audio there is now audio it's like a a heave ho by the vikings and they're going heave ho like they're pulling you up the hill and then you get to the top of the lift hill and you meet what looks like someone from Valhalla um, a warden or something uh, with a big chandelier the same style chandelier that can be seen in um, the station just larger and it's got skulls on and it's very cool and it's swinging uh, you then get into what's called the forest scene this is a very long scene one whole scene so the first part is you've got the two hammers on the side of the trough that come and hit down against the side of the trough um, and of course splash uh, a big splash of water uh, into the trough soaking everyone you then go around the corner from that and that is where you've got the big barrel arm that comes and spinning above you like it's about to hit you and then you've got these arrows which are being fired into the rock face next to you flaming arrows and you feel the wind so it's like just come in front of you um, and then they just appear on the side all on fire that's a really really good effect uh, after that you've got a big crow that just goes crawl. Um, uh, yeah it's crow and then you've got bells which are just chiming you then get uh, close to the final drop as you're going around the corner for that final drop, uh, you are greeted by ghouls on a track coming towards you and they're all going oh, and trying to scare you. You then get to the final drop. This is the tallest drop on the ride. It is a humped drop, so it's uh, like that instead of one just vertical drop. Well, not vertical, but one steep drop. It's uh, your standard wave style drop. At the bottom of this is the feature that has not been seen prior to this ride and has not been seen since this ride and that's the ring of fire the reason why other rides never got it installed is it's very unreliable not anymore they've done something and made it incredibly reliable and it works every time now but what it is is you've got like it's more a box of fire it's not round but it's poles above the trough and next to the trough that are on fire and then a thin layer of uh, what is probably just ethanol or some other flammable liquid uh, is placed on top of the water uh, and lit on fire and the whole thing is extinguished by the splashdown of the boat so you're going head first towards this fire and it only gets extinguished basically by the time you get there it is incredibly scary and it is the best effect on the ride and if you don't know it's coming scares the living crap out of a person really does people get really scared by it and like, oh my god is this fire going to extinguish yes it is but only when you get close to it really good feature you then as you're still slowing down after that drop you've got a big chase fire next to you 
um, with new railing sadly which is a bit of a shame but big uh, fire chase you then go around a little corner and in this corner there's more bow fire and then you've got your two big um, fire bombs basically as they're called and it's one on the left one on the right and it's just to give you like oh my god this boat has just exploded uh, and basically then you're out of the out of the station you come through there's a Valhalla sign again all lit up in red you come through you're outside and back into the station and that is Valhalla it lasts around about five minutes so it's a really good ride really quite long so that's Valhalla if you don't want to go on it now you know what happens on it if you do want to go on it and I just spoiled it I did warn you and if you do want to go on it and uh, you don't care that I just told you about it, go on it, it's great. No matter how many times someone explains what happens in there, it's still amazing going on it. So try and get yourselves down here to go on Valhalla. But that's enough about Valhalla. Let's go over to South Park and go and look at the big one and revolution and that. Go see how it is down that end of the park. I'll see you down there in just a second. So before going down to South Park, just to show you what I was talking about before about Loki's, you can actually see part of the queue line up there. And it was like a snake in these sections, that's why there's windows like that. But yeah, so you, the, you actually queued along there, that's why there's supports, and then you went in through there into the station. And just over here, you can actually see the front, the slanted front I was talking about. Uh, just over there, you can just see it poking up as well. And that was all part of the cable car, which just went straight down. And the cable car was removed about not um, long after the original funhouse uh, burnt down and was, of course, eventually replaced with Valhalla. But as I said, Loki's is a great viewpoint for Valhalla, and you can actually see all the way around to that uh, little feature that is sadly not not very looked after and loads of people don't know about it but it's a really nice little thing it's kind of like a loading section really uh for inside Valhalla but it's really cool and you can see all the rock works along with parts of the uh emergency exit for Valhalla just over here and you can actually see part of the monorail that used to go through uh Valhalla but yeah so that is Loki and Valhalla I'll see you down on South Park just this moment. So those of you who don't come to Pleasure Beach often or have never been to Pleasure Beach won't know that there are two sections to this park. There is North Park and then there is South Park. The reason for these two sections is there is actually a road that cuts straight through the centre of the park. So what the park did to counteract this road which wasn't there when the park was first built now 127 years ago was they built a ramp and a staircase that takes you over the road and then it's the same on the opposite side so it's a really interesting idea on how to connect the two different sides of the parks without having to have two gate lines and make people go through a gate and then back in through a gate it's quite a clever little system and what they've done to counteract that is behind this wall here are the um, service tunnels for the Pleasure Beach along with a ride called River Caves and directly above that on the height of the bridge is the Wallace and Gromit ride. So they've stacked the rides on top of each other because of having to go up. It's just one of the ways that this park has been able to cram so many rides in such a small footprint. And it's what makes this park great. So Pleasure Beach is what's called an amusement park. The difference between an amusement park and a theme park is that amusement parks don't have themed areas. But Pleasure Beach breaks this rule in certain ways. So you do have themed areas. One of them is around Avalanche, which feels like you're in a Bavarian village. Normally also has three bears playing um, Oompa band music. But sadly, uh, because our lunch is closed, they don't play the music when the ride isn't functioning, which is a bit of a shame. 
You then have Nickelodeon Land, which is the kids area, which is itself uh, themed land. So there's another theme zone. <laughs> You've then got around Icon, which is a Japanese Zen garden theme. So another themed area, which all these areas have their own flooring. So could you call Blackpool Pleasure Beach a theme park? Very possible. The only thing making them fail as a theme park is operations along with by the big one. There's no theme down there. That's very much still in the way of the amusement parks. But Pleasure Beach are slowly but surely going around and theming areas. So in the very near future, we could classify this theme park, uh, this amusement park, as a theme park. Now wouldn't that be something? A theme park here in Blackpool has a good ring to it. So here we go, we have the big one. Used to be sponsored by Pepsi Max, but is now just called the big one. However, loads of people still refer to it as the Pepsi Max big one. Now the queue isn't that long for the big one today. I normally don't go on it uh, because it's a one drop wonder. I go on it once a visit, but it's got such a short queue today. I think I'll go on it again today. So let's walk up and go on the big one. So as you may guess from my head, just came off the big one, good as usual getting a bit shaky the new sections are fine but that turnaround has become very shaky i think that may need replacing very shortly we do know that they're replacing all the track for the brake run and the lift hill over a certain amount of time but that turnaround section is now in need of repair or replacement but apart from that it's really good could see maybe replacement of seats on the trains for the big one. They're becoming a bit, just a bit uncomfortable now. But from one icon to the other icon here at Icon Air uh, for maybe a front row. I don't know. I'll I'll decide when I get into the station. Here is just yeah, not far. Just over there. Just over over there. So about 15 minute wait 20 minute wait at max not bad but icon more than happy to wait that long however audio is not playing in the queue line which is a bit of an interesting one ride audio is playing but queue line audio it's playing but very quietly audio bit odd but I'll see you when I get off Icon. See you in a moment. Okay, so I just had a back row ride on Icon. It is my favourite place to ride Icon. Uh, front row, you get that force from the uh, lawn, you feel it. Back row, the airtime is insane. So much flow to airtime and so much ejector. It is a brilliant place to sit. Now, I would go on steeplechase, but I, uh, I don't know. The yellow track is open and that is quite rare, so I'm going to go on it. Haven't done steeplechase in a while and the yellow track is open, so I'll see you after steeplechase. So it's really nice to get back on steeplechase, especially on the yellow track, which is such a rare occasion to be able to do that, only on busy days will they open the yellow track, so it's really nice to get back on that outer track, well, the yellow one. Steeplechase is one of those, you either love it or you hate it. I quite enjoy it. 
especially when I can get on the yellow track. I find that's the least rough out of all three tracks. Now, just walking down to Nickelodeon land area, seeing if anything has changed down in Nickelodeon land. Really? Probably not. I really hope you're not telling me to do wrong Probably not, but it's always good to go and check if there's any changes. And then we'll maybe go on a, a dark ride. Take it down a bit. Quite a few coasters, maybe take it a bit calm and go on a dark ride. Not dark water ride, a dark ride. But let's have a look around Nickelodeon land and see if there's anything changed in this area. See ya. See you in Nickelodeon land. Now, if anyone knows the history of Pleasure Beach, will know that this building here, which has the Nickelodeon land logo and the pizza place this building was actually home to uh, two different coasters uh, space invader and then space invader 2 uh, two dark roller coasters really really good roller coasters but sadly uh, they were both taken out over time and now we have a pizza restaurant in its place however it is still completely empty upstairs in the last halloween event that they did they actually had the entrance to to the old roller coaster is behind the green screen literally behind there are the doors which will take you up you can actually see the top of the doorways there but uh it was it's a big empty space upstairs and i would love i would love to see them use it for a ride or something in the future but it was actually used for a horror maze during their halloween event just behind those doors you went up and then it was uh like we're in hell and you met satan and that very scary maze. It was very cool being able to see the inside of the old Space Invaders building. Really cool in there. Big empty space. Pleasure Beach really needs to put something in there, especially when they are so strict with uh, land here because they don't have a lot of space. To have a big empty building is a bit of a waste. Put a ride in there, please. So another bit of history for you. This park is filled with history. And one other thing is the two wooden coasters that are here in Nickelodeon land. You've got Nickelodeon Street and just in the far corner over there you can just see the blue track of Air Blue Flyer. Now Blue Flyer, of course these have not been their names for the whole time. They have had different names. So Blue Flyer was originally called Zipper Dipper and Nickelodeon Street, which is just round the corner over here. You can just see the entrance building over there, Nickelodeon Street. That was actually called Roller Coaster. Can you believe that name? So yeah, when this became Nickelodeon Land, they renamed the two coasters. Did a tiny bit of work on them. Of course, we painted them. Zipper Dipper was, in, uh, was both of them weren't painted whatsoever. And they repainted a uh, roller coaster. Orange called it Nickelodeon Street and they uh, repainted Zipper Dipper and called it uh, Blue Flyer. Nice little uh, coasters still to have to this day. Zipper Dipper is a perfect introduction coaster and roller coaster is that step up before you take uh, kids onto the Big Dipper. So they are perfect entry level wooden coasters here in Blackpool. However, so this lift hill here has had three roller coasters well, three versions of coasters connected to it. It was the lift hill for the... Uh, um, it was the lift hill for the scenic railway, the Velvet Coaster. And it's been the uh, lift hill for Roller Coaster, now named uh, the Nickelodeon Street. So it's had three coasters, technically two, but three coasters connected to it. And that is a fact you may not have known. So I'm back here at the entrance plaza for Pledge Beach to finish up this video. Pleasure Beach is always much better in summer. There's more people and when, when this park is busy, it is fantastic. The atmosphere becomes electric. And it's when this park thrives is when there's loads of people around and it's a bit of hustle and bustle. 
It's one of the quieter days of the summer today, which meant I got loads of rides in. I enjoyed. I saw Valhalla. Valhalla's in a fantastic condition now. Big Dipper is running incredibly smoothly. Big One's also nice and Icon is spectacular as per usual. I hope you enjoyed this video. I've had a fantastic day here in Blackpool Pleasure Beach. The park is open for another two hours, but when you're a season pass holder and you come here a lot, you don't spend the whole day. And I don't. So, this is Duncan signing off from Blackpool Pleasure Beach. But I will see you in the next video. The next video I do may be from the Withenshaw Fun Fair. Very um, underrated fun fair, not always documented. It's very undocumented fun fair, actually. It's a very nice little fun fair. So I'm going to go to that and I'll make a video about it. So I will possibly see you in Withenshaw Fun Fair in Manchester, in fact. If you didn't know where that was since i missed the natsford fun fair this one will have to do thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed and i'll see you in the next video goodbye